everybody, welcome to episode 70 of an ongoing series where we basically take the camera anywhere we want and we try to find secrets and new discoveries to some of our favorite games. Folks, I have the Halloween spirit in full force inside of me this year and I'm sure that none of you mind. So all throughout the month it's just going to be horror games on this channel, which just brings out the best in some people. Like for example, my good friend Clockwork Pixel who did this animated intro. If you want to see more animations from him, you can check out his video description down below. And instead of wasting too much time here on the intro, let's just get started on this long requested episode and maybe run to a special guest. All right, let's go. Naturally, if there's anything to find at the very start of the game, we're going to include it in this episode. And one of the things that I really want to talk about is, once again, reflection in video games. If you've kept up with my show, you probably know exactly what to expect here, but for someone who may be completely new to this series, allow me to show you how it's all pulled off. In most PlayStation 2 era games, it would most likely be handled by having the characters and environment completely redone in parallel on the opposite side. So instead of a reflection of James, there's actually two versions of James here. And this becomes even more apparent when we see this in a later mirror of the game. See right here I actually got James outside of the game's boundaries and what will actually happen is he will step into the parallel area which does not have any functioning doors or items. Immediately outside of the bathroom we have the road that James is actually driving down and when you try to walk to the right the game just straight up denies you. James ends up saying this is the road that I came from there's no point in going back and now we can see exactly why it's because there pretty much is no road which actually makes a lot of sense because this area is one of the most elaborate in the game. Unlike the town of Silent Hill itself you could theoretically zoom the camera out and see the entire town texture in one shot which is probably about as good as it's going to get for the thumbnail and actually what's really cool too is that if we look at this area from different angles you can see that that photorealistic texture also does a small bend. Before we head off to Toluca Lake, I wanted to do a viewer request. I believe it was YouTuber NitroRad that asked me to see if James's wife is inside the trunk of the car, as it's always been a very popular fan theory. Well, in a technical sense, no, she's not there, but something that's piqued my interest is that the interior of the car is pretty much fully modeled. Well, not even fully modeled, but all the inside walls of the car are there despite the fact that you can't see most of this from the angles that the game allows you to see. So you might have noticed just from playing Silent Hill 2 yourself that the original PlayStation 2 classic is a bit murky, but thanks to Necker Run, we can remove all of these filters. So first I'm going to remove the noise filter, which makes the game look a lot more clear. And then I'm going to remove the fog effect that is off in the background, which makes it look like the render distance is a little bigger, which it isn't and you'll see in a second. And then we're going to remove the fog effect that acts as a texture that overlays the entire game. <laughs> and then after all of that, we're going to maximize the render capabilities of the Silent Hill 2 engine, which still isn't quite as much as you'd like it to be, but you get to see a heck of a lot more in one shot now than you possibly would have ever if we had it in vanilla mode. So now that we established why the game is a little bit more clear in most of these scenes, let me give you a zoom out of the entire graveyard, which that in itself is kind of a treat, but one of the things I noticed here too is that the water effects in Silent Hill 2 are really strange. It looks like the water is nothing more than a transparent 3D ripple effect, which by the way works totally fine when you're looking at it normally in game, but from up above, it's kind of interesting. And also below the water surface is some purple textures that the player would never be able to see. Now this episode is going to be a little bit different from all the others because like I said a second ago there's a ton of fog that covers up the town of Silent Hill which means that people who have played Silent Hill will be excited to see as much of Silent Hill as possible whereas someone who's never played Silent Hill before is like why am I just looking at a bunch of environments which if you fall into that camp you've got to trust me it's like walking around blind for 20 years and then finally getting a prescription for your glasses. Thank you. 
You know, with that said though, I don't want to waste all this time doing a town tour of Silent Hill. It would just take forever. So instead, let's look at areas where the fog is used to make a sense of mystery. Something that makes you guess what's on the other side. And on all the dead ends here, you can see how the road actually breaks, and just how far the road actually goes past the point of where your character's not allowed to go. Also wanted to look at this tunnel where you come across the first straight jacket. Obviously, there's supposed to be an end to the tunnel, but you're barred off by a gate. And is there anything on the other side? Well, surprisingly, yes. Once you get outside of the tunnel, there's actually a square texture to represent the outside that the player's never really allowed to see. I'm gonna have to assume that the developers didn't really know whether or not the fog would reach far enough outward for them to have to render in outdoors, so they made it anyway just to be sure. Many fans of Silent Hill 2 have already come to the conclusion that this body here is actually James. But once again, due to the limitations of the camera, you're not allowed to see the details of the body. However, if we were to take a closer look, you would see beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is in fact James, and also that the blood textures wrap all the way around his body. And now let's peel back the curtain and reveal our special guest. Folks, I want you to be especially kind to someone who's been helping me out a lot on this series, as well as the sole person responsible for this entire tool set for this episode. Thanks for having me on Boundary Bridge, she says. Hey guys and girls, Neko Run here. In the Blue Creek Apartments, there are several boarded up doors that the player never gains access to. However, if we take the camera out of bounds, we can see a small area hidden behind the door, complete with a rusty texture for the floor along with a newspaper on the ground. So here's the part of the game where James has to reach inside of a suspicious hole and pull out a key. At a certain point, whatever he touches seems to shock him at first, but then he reaches in further and ends up pulling it out. Well, the cool thing is, is that not only can we see that what James ended up touching was just the key itself, but also that a prop key that's never seen by the player is all the way in the back of the hole. In fact, at some point the developers realized that this prop key would never be seen by the player, and so when you pick up the actual key that goes into James's inventory, the prop key remains there. So I actually thought this was pretty awesome. So in the scene where James first interrupts Pyramid Head, he runs into the closet and hides, and then the camera goes into a first person perspective. And how this scene was pulled off is kind of funny. First of all, James is not in the scene whatsoever so that he doesn't obstruct the camera in any way, and the actual closet door is moved underneath the closet. This is so that the developers could add in a better looking depth of field effect that makes it look like James is peeking through the cracks of the closet. And on top of that, even though Pyramid Head doesn't have his signature knife yet, you can actually see the shadow of the knife if you move it in a certain way. I remember another viewer request was for way back before I even decided to do an episode on Silent Hill 2, and they wanted to know what happens to Pyramid Head after he goes down the stairs after your first encounter with him. And there isn't too much to say here, but there is a little bit of technical goofery where Pyramid Head just seems to sink into the ground just before he gets to the door. And yes, I did make sure to check to see if he was still underneath that ground after the cutscene played, and unfortunately he does disappear. When you first find Marie in the park, you can see that there's supposed to be surrounding water in this area. And when we remove all the fog effects and increase the render distance, you can see the dry abandoned shoreline in its entirety. Funny enough, if there was supposed to be water here, there would only be a circle around James that would actually follow him everywhere he went, which I'll actually be able to show you later in this episode. So I'm just going to rapid fire through these next three scenes so we can keep the pace going. In this scene, I want to show you guys where Pyramid Head comes from when he gets the jump on James, which as it turns out is out of complete nowhere. Now I want to show you another example of James reaching in a hole for a key that also happens to have a prop key that stays in the scene. And lastly, in various areas of Silent Hill 2, you can see body parts alluding to a full body either within a fridge or within a painting. And I'm just here to show you right now that in three key scenes where you might have the curiosity to see if there is a full body there, uh, there isn't. Here comes my favorite clip from the episode. Here we have a puzzle where you move the faces around on this cube, and then when you leave the puzzle, the room behind you is in a position depending on which face you have it set to. But one thing the player is not allowed to see is that the room actually does move in real time while you're spinning around these faces. Now it's a little bit odd. When you press left and right, it actually does move left and right. It's it's really cool, but when you press up and down, the design of the room changes entirely. I just couldn't believe it actually moved in real time. I would have just assumed that it would load a room depending on what the face was.
the abstract daddy boss room. This room holds a lot of symbolism of Angela's past. The pistons in the wall tell the tale all too well. But just to further push the symbolism, if you brighten the room up and take the camera out of bounds, you can easily see the fleshy texture inside the piston holes, as well as the pistons themselves being called out by backface calling. The hallway you see outside of the room is used when Angela runs out the door at the end of the cutscene. Instead of modeling the entire hallway again, Team Silent just modeled part of it for this scene. Now first I want to just get out of the way something that I mentioned earlier about how water will be surrounding James at all times if there's meant to be a large body of water. And here's the example of that case. But that neat little tidbit only plays a small part to the grand picture of what I'm about to show you. See in this part of the game James is just supposed to go from the dock over to Lakeview Hotel the last part of the game. However if James breaks the boundaries and starts walking in any direction that he wants you can actually get the game to load an island. Now I'm not the first person to discover this probably not even the second. I do believe this was first discovered four years ago by a YouTuber named Red Pyramid and what this island is would be a prop later used in the rebirth ending. Now this island cannot be seen whatsoever by normal play, not unless you get that particular ending and then it cuts to that island. However, going up to it on your own during normal gameplay is simply impossible without the proper tools. And I gotta say one of the coolest things about this island in particular is that it actually does show up on the map. Yeah, apparently this island is geographically correct. And you know what, this island is a great segue to talk about Lakeview Hotel. Normally Lakeview Hotel is completely covered in fog, but thanks to Necarun's tool set, we can actually see the entire hotel in full and do a nice gorgeous zoom out of the whole thing. So let's peel back the curtain a little bit more. See, the way that Silent Hill 2 loads rooms may actually surprise you. Key areas like to have all the rooms in one zone. And when James walks through a door, he's actually being teleported to another room in the same zone. So when we take James outside of a designated room, you can actually see him loading in different parts of the zone entirely by stepping within that room's boundaries. There's two great scenes to take away from this scene with Angela, one of which is in the cutscene you're in a first person perspective, camera is completely focused on Angela. However, in this moment James is actually reacting to every single thing that Angela is saying. When she tries to guilt trip him, you can see James hang his head in shame as to acknowledge what she's saying is true. What's also magnificent is that when Angela goes up the staircase, you can't follow her, and if you could, you would see her body contorting, which is always a total delight. Here's another round of rapid fires for you folks. One of the men that Eddie kills is a unique model. And one of the strangest things about it is that he has a uniquely textured button on his jeans. And as it turns out, it's 100% a ripped texture of the Levi's jeans button, which I'm almost certain they didn't get permission to use here. Another huge viewer request was to see where the monster is inside of the jail cells. Unfortunately, there are no monsters inside of those jail cells. It's all just ambiance noise. <laughs> And I also wanted to do a zoom out of this stupidly long staircase that you have to go down much later into the game. Ah, we finally got to Mary, which ends up being Maria in the end. And before I trigger this final boss fight, I wanted to show you what the developers left her face like, since you have no chance of seeing it anyway. Yeah. For some reason, they decided to leave her in a dopey, slack-jawed facial expression. Yeah, you know, but you know what? My face would probably dilute to something like this too if I had to wait several hours for someone to show up. After finding the player's current room value, I discovered that I could teleport to any room instantly by freezing the value of the room I wanted and starting a new game. I went room by room documenting them along the way as I usually do. After room 46, I kept getting duplicates of the hospital placeholder until I hit room 52. That's when I found the room that Team Silent used to create the ending cutscenes. This room holds two ending areas. The first is Mary's room. This room is used for the in water and the leave endings. And if you were to recall something that I mentioned earlier about being able to load different rooms inside of different zones, then you ought to know that we can walk straight out of this ending set piece right into the one room in the entire game I absolutely had to find, the dog ending room. I pretty much assumed I wasn't going to be able to interact with anything inside of here, but that really wasn't the point. Point was, dog room. Had to find it. And I'm happy to say, mission accomplished. <laughs> Thank you.
Hey, thank you so much for watching. A humongous thank you to Neko Run for being a guest on the show and making this camera tool set to make this episode even remotely possible. If you could, please visit his channel down below. I'm going to leave a link to his tour of the Lakeview Hotel. So if you want to see more Silent Hill 2 stuff, be sure to check him out. But if you're new to my channel, I definitely recommend checking out the playlist. I've already got some pretty good horror titles already available, so I'll leave a link to my Resident Evil 7 episode on the annotation and in the video description down below. But that's all I got today, folks. Stay tuned next week for yet another horror game video on this channel. I think a lot of you are going to really appreciate it. So, take care.